Wonderwall was played with a capo at the second fret. In this position, the capo raises the pitch of any chords played by a tone or two frets. So this E minor chord I'm playing will actually sound as an F sharp minor. When I talk about the frets you need to play on, they'll be in relation to the capo. So this note here is referred to as the second fret. Open, first, second. Even though technically it's the fourth fret. The most important part of this song is that regardless of the rhythm that's being played, your picking hand should move in a constant 16th note strumming pattern. That's four strums for every beat. This produces the most fluent sound. Failing to do this will make it hard to maintain a fluent action. To play the correct rhythm, you move the pick slightly away from the string when you don't want the chord to sound. Let's start with the chords you need for the intro and verse riff. The first chord is an E minor 7. You play this with your first finger at the second fret of the fifth string. Your second finger on the second fret of the fourth string. Your third finger on the third fret of the second string. And your fourth finger on the third fret of the first string. Next is the G chord. Keep your third and fourth fingers where they are. Then place your first finger back on the second fret of the fifth string and place your second finger on the third fret of the sixth string. This is followed by a D suspended fourth or D sus four chord. Once again, keep your third and fourth fingers where they are and then place your first finger at the second fret of the third string. The final chord in the sequence is an A7 suspended fourth or A7 sus4. Despite its complicated name, you'll be pleased to know all you have to do is move your first finger to the second fret of the fourth string. The first beat consists of two downstrokes. The first one hits all six strings, while the second plays only the lowest few strings. Though don't worry if you hit slightly more or less strings. Noel Gallagher doesn't play the same number of strings every time he plays it. The second beat consists of two downstrokes followed by an upstroke. So together you have Next you play a downstroke followed by an upstroke on the G chord. After that play three consecutive downstrokes followed by an upstroke. So the whole bar sounds like this. Next, you move to the D sus4 chord. Start with your first finger removed from the chord and play a downstroke, then play an upstroke and a downstroke. Place your first finger on the second fret of the third string like this. This chord is completed by two more downstrokes. The A7 sus4 chord is played with three consecutive upstrokes. As you play the upstrokes, bounce your fingers to accent the rhythm. Don't take them all the way off, just stop pressing. This is followed by a down, up, down, up strum pattern. Remove your first finger for the final two strums to lead back to the start of the riff. One often overlooked aspect of this riff is that you change chords while you're still strumming. This results in some of the strums sounding as open strings combined with the two highest strings, which remain fretted. This will happen quite naturally as you move between chords, but is an important part of the sound. When the singing starts, there is a slight variation of the final chord. Instead of starting with three consecutive upstrokes, there's an extra downstroke between the second and third upstroke. You still bounce your fingers as previously described. On the original recording, Noel switches freely between these two very similar variations. After seven playthroughs of the main riff, there's a two bar interlude before the second verse. The first chord is a C add nine which is played with your third and fourth fingers still placed on the third fret of the first and second strings. 
Your first finger is placed on the second fret of the fourth string, and your second finger is placed on the third fret of the fifth string. Play two down strokes followed by a down and up stroke. The next down stroke is actually just the top two strings and the open third and fourth strings, followed immediately by the D sus4 chord. This sounds more complex than it actually is, as it's a natural part of the chord change. The D sus4 chord starts with two upstrokes, followed by a down and an upstroke. As with the previous part of the verse riff, bounce your first finger when you play the upstrokes to accent the rhythm. The final part of the bar is a down, up, down, up strumming pattern. Remove your first finger for the final two strums to lead to the next chord. The final chord is the A7 sus4. Play down, up, down, down, down. Then play two upstrokes, followed by a down and upstroke. As with the previous part of the verse riff, bounce your first finger when you play the upstrokes to accent the rhythm. The final part of the bar is a down, up, down, up strumming pattern. Remove your first finger for the final two strums to lead to the start of the main riff.